So I think at this point I've gotten just about as much as I can out of this geometry as, as a basic as it is. So what I'm going to do here is actually give myself a subdivision. So I'm just going to control and D and everything will get basically whatever, wherever there was one polygon, there are now four. You can kind of, you can kind of see what's going on here is that used to be one face. So if I hit shift D, we can go back. So there's our original face. If I hit D, I now have four there and it will basically do a, a smoothing operation on it as it adds that new geometry. So, and uh, shift F by the way, is the hot key for turning the, the polyframe on, or you can just hit this button here. And if you see it with like where it's looking a little weird, you might have the fill or the line or something else. There's like little options here that you can also turn off and on. And if you hit it just right, you can do it on accident, which is no good. So we can see here, there's still like some odd stuff kind of happening. You can see in the lighting, like how it's deciding to triangulate where, you know, ideally it would be filled out there. Uh, I don't know what's necessarily going to be an issue or not down here. But again, because we are ultimately going to be dynamizing that this, this kind of stuff is not really going to be that big of a deal. Uh, it's not going to be a deal breaker at this point. You know, we're not, I'm not that worried about it, but I will ultimately want to get in there and uh, start playing with it. So if I'm looking from this view, if I hold shift, I, I this is the view of, of you know, the, the, the perfect orthographic side view there. So I want to kind of rotate so it's a little bit closer to what's going on here and turn perspective on. So when I do that, it makes me think maybe I have this uh, index finger going out maybe just a little bit too far because it seems like we shouldn't really be able to see it and yet I can see it. I'm also noticing that the length of the hand here feels like mine's probably a little bit too short. So because there's all this stuff is going on over here and I've already done some adjustment, it's going to be easier to just kind of back it out this way. So I'm going to do that first. And then let's come and take another look. Now, because I'm kind of approximating where the camera position is, it's not like a, you know, set in stone that my index finger is going out too far. It could just be the perspective. Also like my, uh, I took the, I took the photos using a 50 millimeter lens and my focal length is 50 millimeters. So we should be getting a fairly close perspective distortion between the, the ZBrush uh, viewport and the photos that I took. But again, you know, it's nothing's, nothing's ever that perfect. So we may see something that looks a little bit peculiar and we're just going to have to kind of figure it out. So looking at the, the, the orientation, of this finger here to the hand, it's like, it's pretty, pretty, pretty much straight off the hand, straight down that, that main line and is very straight. So I kind of wanted to, we'll just give it a little bit of a barrel rotation and then kind of twist it back. This index finger here, because again, we sort of positioned it and then, and then we bent it. It's possible that we've introduced some incorrect information there possible is maybe not the right word. 100% guaranteed would probably be a little bit more accurate. So I can see I've got this, this line here. I'm just trying to nail some of that stuff down. You know, we'll worry about getting like the fingers. Look, so now that I've, I've got more geometry, I might want to bump. Like if I hold shift, you can see my Z intensity goes down to 16 because I, I reduced it so that I didn't melt all of my geometry. When I had less of it, but now that I've got more, it's probably makes sense to go ahead and just so it operates a little bit more quickly. So I don't have the thickest fingers here in the reference photo, but they're certainly thicker than what I've got going on here. So I might actually, I think I'm going to use, so inflate is a very risky brush to use, especially for people that are not super familiar with ZBrush because you end up getting intersecting geometry like this. And that's, that's very, very bad news, but it is also a very, very useful brush when you have a situation where you're trying to make a tube a little bit thicker. So, and also with Dynamesh, like those kinds of issues are, are less problematic because basically the way, I mean, I'll go into a lot more detail about Dynamesh here pretty soon, but the way Dynamesh works is it just looks at the outer shell of your geometry and will trim out that surface so you get a nice clean airtight mesh most of the time 
sometimes it can be a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to go back to the move brush here. I'm just looking at the thumb. Turn perspective off. I'm sorry, I'm going to leave perspective on. And I'll shift here and just kind of smooth the wrist a little bit. Got the move brush still there. So like one question you can ask is, we have this knuckle here, which almost looks like a, like a staple shape, right? Like it's flat on the, on the top and then vertical on the sides. And what feature on the rest of the hand does that kind of line up with? All right, so it looks like it sort of lines up with the first knuckle of the middle finger. So, you know, if we're, if we're dealing with something that's kind of consistent here, which is obviously up for debate this early in the process, I can kind of guess that that feature is going to be around here somewhere. So that means I can get in here and probably start moving some of that geometry around. Maybe go a little bit thicker through here. So hopefully it's becoming apparent at this point in the process that what you're really doing is sort of looking at negative space and, and trying to match silhouettes as much as possible with the understanding that it's going to be a, a period of, of constant adjustment for quite a while. So I'm going to make, I'm going to mask off the bottom of the finger, give it a little blur, and then I can just use the move brush to make it a little bit thicker without worrying about messing with uh, the bottom of it there. That looks like this is going to be, once again, we can try that same, that same trick. Mask off one side of the, whatever the digit is you have to be working on. So we do have a nice little dip right back there that I'm probably going to need to wait until I get a little bit more geometry to support. But we can start putting that in a little bit. Come and take a look at the finger. So we have a nice kind of sharp peak there at that pinky. Also, this feels like it's a lot. This finger is probably a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate it. I'm going to hold Control and Shift. You can see I've got my select right here by default. I'm going to go to Select Lasso. So we'll just go ahead and isolate our ring finger. It's a little bit trickier to work with because it's right there. Uh, in the middle of all the other stuff. Kind of go ahead and select, just mask off the top of the finger, show everything, and then blur the mask. So having done that, now I can come over. And the reason I want to do that is I actually want to get kind of a, a consistent, um, like if you're just working on the finger by itself, you can end up with some odd stuff kind of at the boundary of the finger. So if everything is visible and the mask is kind of consistent on that entire mesh, then you'll be in, whoops, then you'll be in better shape. All right, so where is my, there's my finger reference. I may zoom in on this shot a little bit here in a second. Or at nine minutes, I'm probably about to, about to wrap this video up, but we might look at it in the next video where we will continue to refine the shape and volume of the various parts of this hand.